It's just you got to be constant. You got to be steadfast. You got to be committed in everything that you're doing. And over time, those steps, it just gets higher. The ladder gets higher. You just start leveling up. Because that's $7.25 to, to $15 to $21 to $50. Now I'm charging $100 a session. Now I'm selling clothes. It's, it's this. You cannot literally cap yourself. But it's what you see in the mirror that's making you cap yourself. I kind of rambled though a little bit. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, you felt that, bro. Yeah, absolutely, and you know that's that's some of the things that um, I think a lot of us, especially us millennials and young adults, sort of speak are are facing right now. Um, this COVID has shook up the lives of so many people mentally, because I, I personally have goals, and, and many of us have goals as well. We talked about it here on on Thursday about you know what do we, what do we want to do in our life you know what goals are we pursuing and and there are so many answers and so like how can we surround ourselves even in this moment with um, people who encourage us? You see, the, the, those are my mentors back there. You see all yeah. those books? Uh -huh. Like those are my mentors. A lot of people will complain like there's nobody to help me. I'm like you got books, you got YouTube. You got the internet. There's not one person in this world that should be broke. Yeah. Not one. There should not be one person to ever feel like they're hopeless. It's too much information. And information is power. And with power, you can create anything that you want to. Like a lot of people, like you drink the same water I drank for five years, Thomas. But it's what do you feed your brain? Like what do you tell yourself mentally? Because a lot of people don't understand mindset is not, it's not a thing. Like your, your, your mind is not a thing, it's, it's an activity. It's just constant. But you choose what you think. But it's programmed by what you watch, what you read, what you hear, what you believe. And with that being said, that dictates how you move. And so when I hear like my clients say, well, I don't know how to do it. I'm like, well, you're a nurse. You studied for four years for that. It was hard as hell. And I know that for sure. <laughs> why did you why did you pass nursing like what made you pursue nursing what made you learn nursing it's called application you wanted to do it. you wanted to understand it why don't you treat your body like that why are you leaning on me that's why i tell my clients i don't take the credit i take the cash because the credit goes to the person who applies himself because i only get them four percent of the day 96 percent of the day is what they feed themselves mentally are you digging in a, in a, in a dorito bag at 12 o'clock at night are you missing cardio? Are you skipping cardio? Are you half-assing in the gym? Like, that's something that they, that's their responsibility, not mine. I uncover and discover. I show them their weaknesses and their strengths. Focus on, this is your strengths, make it better. This is your weakness to make your strengths better. Focus on that. Now, when people, well, I, I don't want to check in. I'm fat. I'm this, I'm that. I'm like, shut up. I don't want to hear that because that negative energy comes into me, and I'm an empath, and I hold on to that. I'm like, you got to watch how you talk to me. So that I can't, I can't do it. That is so negative to me because that limits, if you limit yourself in the gym, you limit yourself in the real world. And with that being said, going back to the COVID-19 thing, and that was a whole, that shook me up. Like that's why I'm on fire right now. Because I had to go get, I told myself for two weeks, I'll go get a job at Costco. I worked at Costco. I, went, I told myself I would never ever get a job again. I would never punch a clock ever again. But they shut my, my gym's door. I didn't have a job. Like, I couldn't make income. I was scared as hell. But what I did was, okay, I, I might have a squat rack at my mom's house. Got there, got a bar. Met up with a guy. He gave me a bench and some plates. Went to the gym to unlock the door. He changed the locks. My heart dropped. So I got an incomplete gym. So I'm literally thinking, like, what am I about to do? So my, I ended up getting a job, $15 an hour, working 27 hours. That 27 hours can't even pay half my child support. And I'm just like, what am I going to do? And then they extended the quarantine another six weeks. Right. I literally had to dig deep into my soul and be like, okay, open your schedule up, Josh. Get back to the grind. But what I did was just, who are you? I read a book called Man Search of Meaning. It's basically, basically, we cannot, we can't control what's outside of us, but we can't control our attitudes. So I tried to keep a positive attitude, even though I didn't want to work at Costco, I still carry myself as if I own Costco. Because people walk up to me, are you the manager? Are you this? Are you that? Are you going to be here forever? I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Temporary. <laughs> like I have bigger goals. <laughs> I got bigger goals. Like I don't want to just bag up groceries all day. Like I can't do that. Like I pay my dues making seven twenty five. I can't go backwards. But I understood it was just temporary. But what it did, I felt 
like I kind of got encouraged because I put my pride aside, did what I had to do. But once I got the opportunity again to do what I was that I loved, I took off. Like I was like, never again will I ever be locked out of gym because now I have a home gym. Now I have I have cash to, to go fund my own gym. So it's like within four months from April, no March, April, May, June, July, I've done more these five months than I did in the last two years. And, 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 and all I did was read. Because again, there's not too many people out there, especially black people who, who share success. And it's kind of hard to have these conversations with successful brothers because some brothers are just selfish. They don't want to give you the game. They don't want to teach you the game. So I just read. And so with that being said, I surrounded myself with positive affirmations through books, through videos, to get myself out the rut, make sure I stayed active, make sure I worked out, make sure I was giving out what I wanted to get back in. And that kind of changed my paradigm back to get back on your stuff, Josh. You only get one shot at this. This is your second chance. So don't mess this one up. And so that's why I'm moving a little bit different now. Very different. And one of my clients, I think she's watching, she said, since I met you, since we started training, you are on fire like something is different. Because I felt broken again. I felt like I was back in 2010 when I crossed that stage and I didn't have a job for eight months. And I've never ever, that's, that's, that motivates me to never, to not to be a used to be. And so with that being said, you guys got to find that drive, that inner drive, like, what is my why? What am I trying to leave behind? Like, who's, who, who, who's looking up to me? Who am I responsible for? When you start working, when your grind is bigger than you, like, the grind is unlimited. Like, you have, you, you, you'll find the energy. Again, I'm 28 days out from a show. Like, my carbs, I probably had 80 grams of carbs. Like, I'm not eating, like, Thomas was asking me questions. I'm like, bro, I'm occupied. I'm like, bro, you just gonna have to like figure yeah. it out. Like, it was hard for him to even just get in contact with me because I was so busy. I'm up at 3:30 every morning. Yeah. Like, I'm I'm trying to be in bed by 8 p.m. I haven't even worked out because I didn't want to miss this. So it's like once you once you find that purpose is and you start working for strangers, then you start getting you start tapping into a different drive, a different energy, and that's where winners the winners win it and the losers lose. Winners know that they have a higher self that they're talking to, that they see in the mirror, that who they want to be, and they act as that as that person, as if I was at the front desk, acting as if I was the club manager already, or at Costco as if I was the club manager already. But people got to do that in an everyday life, no matter what job they're doing. I don't care if it's the gym, if it's at the mall, you represent you at all times. But people don't hold themselves to that standard. They hold other people to the standard. That's why reality TV is so dang popular because they like, well, that, my life ain't that bad. I feel good about myself, but what have you accomplished? That's my biggest thing. What have you accomplished? When my brother died, I told, I told them, I don't care that my brother died. That's a part of life. But I'm just mad because he didn't leave anything behind for the kids. Kids can't eat hope. Kids can't eat prayers. Kids can't e eat tears. What are you leaving behind for your siblings, for your family, for the legacy? That's what this is about. What you about to say? Let's go. I um I admire that because although you had to switch up your uh your tactics, so to speak, you still made a way to have a source of income, yes, but it still wasn't uh, a passion of yours. And so a lot of times in you know in life things happen, right? The thing you're living high on the hill, and all of a sudden you lose everything, right? Mm -hmm. uh, look at yourself and that's really all you have is yourself in the mirror what, what you know what are you going to do so I, I, I appreciate that very much and it's very helpful uh to know especially moving forward yeah. mm -hmm. uh, does anybody have questions for josh at this time yeah i'll talk to me i better use me i'm yeah. better with an interview because i have so much in my head and it's kind of hard to, to to bullet point because i don't like serving cold food like I, I probably read a couple books, run over a couple notes, but I'm not I'm not scripted. I don't like serving cold food. But I got I I, ha, I have experienced a lot of stuff from business to life to where man like stress management and, and mental image and, 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 and mirroring success and and self-esteem and self-awareness, like those are the, the, the principles, the values, the basis, the steps to success. If you don't have control over this. Nothing else really matters because what a lot of people do, like I'm seeing a lot of women with the Botox lips, getting fake butts, mm -hmm. they trying to fix the outer self. But mm -hmm. that's like me basically looking at the mirror, 
trying to change my clothes as I look in the mirror. It's impossible. It's, it's impossible. What people need to learn how to do is basically start from within. What do you want to be? Who do you want to be? What do you deserve? How do you want to feel? Then dictate that. Because the first thing when, when a client messes up or if they don't know what they're doing, they look at me, I'm like, why are you looking at me as if I can control you? Look in the mirror, look at your body, feel, control yourself, breathe, learn yourself. Self-awareness, like know thyself. But again, a lot of people are so scared of themselves because they don't want to disappoint themselves. And when they don't disappoint, when they don't disappoint themselves, they literally disappoint themselves. So it's self-sabotage. That's the alternative of, of, a, of, a, of an unhealthy self-image. Everything that you do, you won't be good enough so you don't even try. Or if you do try and you get close to success, you limit it because you already set a, a limit to what your success should feel like. Like let's say somebody want to make $100,000 a year. And within six months, they make $100,000 a year. But they just stop working because they set that standard. But a lot of people do that, and, I, and it's, and it's kind of crazy to me to where, as adults, with people who have kids and responsibilities, to think like that. People with jobs who, who people rely on think like that. So it's like for me, and I control a lot of, well, I won't say control, but I influence a lot of people around me. My job is to make people better, stronger, and wiser. So it's like I can't be the opposite of that in real life. I'm not putting on a show. There's a real model and there's a role model. I try my best to live, walk it, talk it, as if I see it, the same stuff I tell them, I do. There's nothing like, there's nothing like raw, authentic, Autistic and transparent leadership. And that's what I try to display at all times, but a lot of people don't even know what to, they don't lead themselves. They waiting for somebody else to grab them, they wait on the savior. But you need to save yourself first. You need to believe in self first. You need to love yourself first. And a lot of people lack in self love. Uh, there's a question here on Facebook. What's up? It says, uh, what books did he read? I'm hey, sure there's multiple is, books. This is, I got some. <laughs> but this is the grandfather psycho cybernetics this is the grandfather maxwell Maltz. he's one of the first psychologists to basically throw out the principle of self-image and a lot of people like uh earl nightingale uh bob proctor who else zig ziglar all the guys in the 80s and the 90s they mm -hmm. took off what he said and, and, and made it a little bit better now you gotta look i think tony robbins does it a little bit but there's also neuro linguistic program, and I'm working on that right now. It's a certif certification on human behavior. It's basically dang near mind reading because there's IQs, there's body language that you can read. And a lot of people don't understand, like, I see everything a person does from, from the head to the toes. So if I, so the stuff that I, that I read is like I'm looking for. So it's easy for me to be like, I want to read that book because I'm going to apply that at work. But a lot of people don't want to read because they're just going to read it and, and put it down and not apply it. So if you read, read with a purpose in mind, like study the book, get this book first. And when you get this book, it will basically show you what you need to do afterwards. Cause there's always a bibliography or some type of recommendations of what books to give. Amazon would do it. You type in psycho cybernetics, or this is the Bible of success. Napoleon Hill, the law of success. Like these books are the books that people copy out of. Like all these best-selling authors, they get it from the source. A lot of people don't even know who the source is because it was so long ago. But Napoleon Hill, Maxwell Maltz, uh, Dale Carnegie, Earl Nightingale, those guys, Google those names, get the books, learn. The more you learn, the more you earn. But I have a, I have a, I have a, I have a three-point system. When you know more, you can do more. If you can do more, you can be more. It's that simple. People who are doing more, they just know more. It's not ability. It's experience. They're applying. They're messing up. They're failing forward. A master will fail a thousand times before a, 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 a white belt will, will, even, will even attempt a kick. So it's like, in order to succeed, you have to fail. Like it's, It builds character. But winning builds houses. You got to keep that in mind, too. Absolutely. Just don't take answers for no reason. Oh, it does over here. There's another question here. Kira. Uh, says if there is one book you could have read years earlier that has helped you, what is it? Atomic Habits. That's, uh, oh, that's a good one. I read that before. Yeah, I, I, bought, all, I bought all my clients there for Christmas, uh, last, well, the beginning of the year. Basically, 
it, it just it's 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 about it's about self love and self image, but it starts breaking it down to you are your habits. Like there's a thing of consistency versus intensity. When people replace consistency with intensity, you're more, more likely to basically achieve what you want to achieve rather than getting burnt out. But a lot of people want to lose weight. I want to lose 50 pounds in three months. Well, how about you just lose one pound a week? For yeah, pounds? yeah. Definitely. But like people don't, but people want it now. They instant gratification, but if it's easy, come, it will easily be gone. Because if you don't really work for it, if you cheat your way out of the ground, the ground won't repay you. Like you might see a little bit of fit, but that 50 pounds you lost might turn to another 100 pounds you gain. That's typical. A lot of people looking at me, I've been diligent in the last decade. Like this is my sixth year as an entrepreneur. I'm not in a rush to succeed because I understand the more money I make, the more problems I end up having. I'll have more freedom, but I'll also have more responsibilities. I'll get taxed more. I'll have more people reaching for me. I'll have more people like tugging on me and that's emotional labor. Yeah. That's why we see a lot of these guys commit suicide because they just get hopeless and they feel lonely even though they have all this money. So in my head, it's like everything I'm going through is for a reason. I'm just trying to find the reasoning behind it, the why behind it. But a lot of people don't ask those questions like, why am I doing this? Where am I going? Where is this leading me? Why am I around these people? Those questions you literally got to ask and that's where wise up comes into play is self-awareness. Who am I around? What am I thinking? What am I doing? Is this getting me to my target destination? But a lot of people don't have goals. Mm -hmm. Without goals, like that's like playing basketball with no goal. Like there's no game to be played. <laughs> you just like, there's no game, not even in the game. One of the biggest things that um, I've learned over the years is that you can't have high expectations for people to do it for you. Um, that's so true, even with uh, everything that's going on and, and before, you know what I mean? Nobody expected the nation to be shut down. Nobody expected for um, everybody to, to pass away and get this virus. Nobody expected this. And it was happening before in China, but nobody expected it to come through America. And you know, while I was working in, in East Texas, I knew that's not where I wanted to be. So just like you, I had to, you know, uh, muster up my strength. I had to take time to work on myself in order to be uh, the man that God wanted me to be, as well as you know, fulfill my goals that I set before myself. Because I knew that life wasn't going to get me there where I wanted to be. So, um, on top of like you know, reading reading books, um, working out, and doing the things you do, you know. Did you have anybody, like one person, kind of doubt you or tell you, like, you can't do this or you you can't, you know, build your own gym or you can't be successful in selling your Bro, your my whole life I've been, I've been behind the eight ball. That's why I got a big-ass chip on my shoulder because I have so many doubters. Uh -huh. But I, in my, in, I think it was episode two of my YouTube, my Road to Pro. I do this for my haters, too. Like, I want, try, I want my haters to be mad. I want them to be... I want them to give up. Like, well, he's not gonna stop. I'm gonna just be a fan. Like, that's that's my goal. I want my head to be like, hey, come help me. That's how hard. I'm, that's how hard I'm working. Because the reason I got into bodybuilding was a dude told my client that why are you letting him prep for a show and he never done a show. And in my head, I'm like, you right. But I've learned like what to do. I understand the basics. But I've done. I did two shows before she did a show. The first show, I kind of messed up my pose and I got like dead last because they thought I was showboating because I stopped like four feet away from the X. Like the photographer was telling me to scoot up and I kind of jogged on stage and they deducted points and I got like third call outs. But then I did a show two weeks later, I got top five. And with, after that, it was just a bug. Like I want to see how far I could take it. And then that doubt fueled me in going like progressing to it. I'm having high school classmates, college classmates, bro, you bodybuilding? Why you wearing them chores? Why you doing all this? My mama, why you, you're not getting paid for? Why are you stressing yourself out? Da, 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 da. Right. I'm addicted to success. I'm results driven. Everything don't have to be a payday. Mine was more of a self-fulfillment. It's I'm accomplishing something. I'm beating my, it's like a fast. It's I'm basically recreating myself every time I do a show because you literally, it's mental dialogue. It's a lot of, a lot of internal dialogue going through bodybuilding shows. It's a lot of internal, it's internal uh, dialogue going through being a trainer, being a salesman. Then when I left, 
I had so many trials and tribulations within that first six months. I had probably four investors and tried to invest in me. I looked at probably six, seven spots, signed a lease to some. But once I see a red flag, I end it because I'm like, I'm not desperate. I know I can make it without y'all. I don't want to bind myself to a contract where I'm sweating and you eating. And so with that being said, everything that happened to me, I used as fuel to make myself better, basically. Like, it's basically like when, when you're scared or you're in doubt, you just work harder. That's the only way you beat fear and doubt. That's all I did. That's why I read. That's why I was so proactive. Like, every Sunday, I, I made sure I did something to improve my business, my, my body, and my mind. Like, at all times, like, Sunday was my day to, to basically, re, like, recalibrate. Like, I really had one day where I just literally just cried after, after one dude was like, I can't invest in you. I don't have $100,000 that I said, da 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 And after that, I just turned into a monster. Come on, I'm like, you know, Miss Warren and Thomas, I'm sorry. My mom said, you're going to be a big beast or a bitch. My mama told me that. And when she told me that, I was just like, oh, my God. And within five months, no, three months. This was January. No, March. This was three weeks. A lady saw me for three years. She said, Josh, I've seen you for three years. I want you to train me. How much do you charge? I said, $50 a session. She said, I'm not getting out of bed for $50 a session. She said, I'm going to charge myself $100 a session. I want to train five times a week. She brought me a $2,000 check to, book, to my boot camp. She said she wanted to train for a month. Month two, right after my birthday, she, I had a show. She said, I want to do this for your birthday, but I didn't want to distract you. Here you go, $20,000 for two years of training. Go get your gym. I said, what? Long story short, didn't get the gym. They reinvested to my apparel, reinvested to me. Because again, I, I go off intuition. The year, the next year, $40,000. I'm like, what in the worst? Like, Josh, I believe in you. I'm like, don't think I, like, I just like paying off my debt. Like, she, insurance, like, they get big bonuses. She just like pay, like, pay, she, her, her, her car in her house was paid off, like, probably 10, 20 years ago. I mean, she just had, like, unlimited income. And she was like, here you go. I've, do, I've done this for multiple business and audiences. Don't think you're special. You are special, but don't think it's, it's like that special. Mm -hmm. But going through all that, good stuff going to come out of it. Like, you don't stop. Just imagine if I stopped when I was at my son's mom's house. Just imagine if I stopped at the front desk. Just imagine if I stopped, just didn't even want to jump and become an entrepreneur. I would have never felt that. I would have never had sixty thousand dollars in my pocket like think about that that's that's a that's a stack like this yeah you know what's, what's gonna be, like you debt free you can literally pay off anything that you want to pay off and with that being said when she did that i raised my prices to 75 dollars a session to 100 dollars a session because she made me believe more into myself but those are the type of people you attract when you start moving with a little bit more intention and purpose because you start like so there's a thing about self-image so your body has a thermostat so let's say everybody's seven degrees. Like everybody who's successful is seven degrees. But when you start down yourself, you get a little colder. You start getting to 60 and 50. But do you think seven degree people hang around 50 degree people? The conversation's a lot different. So you get these dudes who 55, 55 degree people hang around 50, 50, 45 degree people. And the conversations are look at him, look at him. But when you get to a certain degree, the conversation like, let me help you. Let's make more money. Let's invest in this. What are you doing to, to become better? Those are the people that you attract by walking in, into your purpose, by looking into the mirror and being like, I know who I am, I know what I want, and I'm going to get there regardless of what happened to me. But a lot of people will, woe is to me, my life is hard. Life ain't hard. Well, life is hard. You're just making it harder because you don't believe in you. Mm. But it's all about how you talk to yourself. But again, going back to it, self-love. People are not even their own best friends. They're their worst enemy. You're never too good enough. But if you're proud of yourself, if you can go to bed and smile and say, I put my best foot forward, you're okay. You're doing what you need to be doing. And if you're doing that 80% of the year, you will be exceptional. Like, but people just don't, they, they quit too soon. At any disappointment, they quit too soon. That's what I, well, <laughs> you know, that's very true. And that's a really good story because anything you start, 
And I'm learning that now. Anything you start, your expectation has to be this. You have to continue to deliver content, deliver a good product, to deliver consistency and be patient and everything else will come. Um, and I, and I tell that to a lot of people, you know, that I come in contact with, with my friends that complain about, you know, not having the job they want or don't have enough money to do this. I said, well, you may, you know, you may not have much money, but what are you doing? Prepare yourself for that next step because you can't achieve it. But your conversation in the, in the um, actions don't add up. So your three step mm -hmm. system is so true. Um, and I hope a lot of people catch that and, and wrote it down because that applies in all life, not just your, your life and fitness, but nursing. That's everybody. I even, you don't even have to have a job. If you're working towards that position, you have to know um, why you're doing what you want to do in order to get to where you want to be. Mm -hmm. um, like Bruce, oh, go ahead, go ahead, my bad. There's a comment, I don't want to miss it. Oh yeah, Janet Strange, she, the nurse, uh, she's a nurse uh, now. She said, I don't have a question, but I wanted to say thank you for this. Uh, this came right on time. The fire under my behind has officially been lit. Uh, no one can do this for me except for me. Like she said, I'm trying to read it as an emoji, funny on the laptop, but um, disappointing myself is big, but I can still prevail. All right now. Like with disappointments, like you got to embrace reality. You got to embrace the stuff. Like, Absolutely. Two years ago, I was in Vegas. Was it probably last year? Honestly, I don't know. I forgot. It may be two years ago. I went from third place to tenth place nationally, one point away from my pro card to get tenth place. I was, I want I was, I don't even know if I was disappointed. I was confused. Like, what do I have to do to become better? Like, why am I not good enough? But then again, a lot of people didn't understand what I was going through internally, like my insides, like literally my digestive system was, was messed up, but mm -hmm. I was still, I didn't want to quit. I didn't want to like set the tone like, oh, I'm king this, I'm king that, but I'm quitting everything. So I fought through, but what I learned was I have to do it for me. Like I'm not, I, I told myself never to do a show if I really didn't feel good enough for it. Like literally good enough. Not, not that I'm able, I'm very able to do the show, but if I'm throwing up every night, if I can't sleep, if, I, if I'm if i going to the doctor trying to figure out what's wrong with me, that right there was toxic to myself because I'm literally fighting against my body. Hmm. And I didn't get rewarded for that. Because how can you win without, if you're not right within? And that's a life to, a working out to life correlation. If you don't have this inside right, this inside right, if you're not feeding your body the, the proper stuff, to, if you're not getting the right sleep, if you're not feeding yourself the right uh mental uh food in the physical food you won't have energy in your body hold on one second absolutely yes good that's thank you big man appreciate you, I, you I, say that? Nah, I got it i got it i got something right behind the door okay. uh, thank you yes sir those are the hats y'all you gotta get the hats yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> i forgot what i was saying uh you saying um uh, how the show you had a show uh Somebody else. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So basically, if you're not feeding yourself the right food, if you're not taking care of yourself from an inside standpoint, mm -hmm. outside you're not going to be 100%. Your body is the vehicle to excellence. Like your body is just a tool. Your mind is, your mind is the, the compass. Your mind dictates where the body goes. There's a book called uh, Principles by Ray Dalio, and it kind of like rung true. He said, treat your body as if it was your cell phone. Become objective with your body. You're not your body. You're not you. You tell, if you literally take yourself outside your body, Meek Mill said this is one of his songs. If you take yourself outside your body and look at yourself, what do you see? Who do you see? Like, how are you moving? Are you proud of that? Like, what if you took, your, took yourself and envisioned your son looking at you as you, as you worked or, or worked out or, or lived your life? Would you be proud of that? And in my head, every time I look at that camera, I'm thinking of my son. I ain't really thinking about nobody else. So it's like you literally have to live for somebody else to, to, to accept that responsibility to hold yourself accountable to a higher standard. Because again, if you don't have anybody holding you accountable, you're just going to wander around life and die struggle. But that's interesting. Um, what did you say or what, what conversation did you have to have with 
uh, like your high school friend and, and buddies that wasn't at your same, if any, like that wasn't at your same level mentally. It just depends yeah. on, like, I'm an introvert, bro. Yeah. Like 98% of introverts mm -hmm. are millionaires for a reason. Because everybody, like, my ears are sensitive to some, some type of to conversations. So, like, I work out with a group, a group of dudes. If I hear I can't, well, why he doing that? Why? That doesn't matter to me. I'm focused on what I'm doing and what I got to do. If you're talking about somebody else, if you worried about what you can't do, I don't want to hear that shit, like, at all, because I don't want that affecting me. So what I do is make sure I keep unproductive or, or uninspired conversation to a minimum. You don't, I don't go to the club like that. I don't, I don't have gatherings like that. I sleep, I watch Rocky movies and read books if I'm not in the gym. I always try to find something inspiring to keep me motivated because I'm all I got besides my mom and my pops. Like them, like those two are my cornerstone. Like my dad literally just bought his first shirt for me. Oh, really? On my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> like my mom, she became a client. She became a client 2016 when I became an entrepreneur. So it's like, like when I see when I see the family start getting involved, that means I'm doing something right because the family is the last person that people to really help you succeed when you start your own business. Like strangers help you more than family. But when I see my parents start like literally like investing in me, like, hey, keep doing what you're doing. I love you. Send me the link to your YouTube videos. I'm like, Pop, text me about YouTube. Thank like that, that, that makes me feel good because he's proud. So if I'm making my pops proud, I'm making myself proud. And so I'll continue to keep striving. So now I need my son to be proud too. So it's just you just gotta have reasons to to keep going to find to find that that, that fire within to to, to to exceed all expectations. But again, it starts mentally. And that's one thing that 75% of the people don't, 85% of the world don't understand. I remember one dude was like, everybody not supposed to run a business. Everybody can't do that. Everybody can't. I'm like, why can't people learn? Like, who told you that people can't learn? Only people who said that they can't learn were teachers who said they couldn't learn. That teacher probably was just dumb as them. But as soon as that, put it like this, you can't put a monkey in, a, in the water and expect to be a monkey. You can't put a fish on a tree and expect to be a fish. Everybody has their own little way of learning. But the way our system is right is it, it is the center of our test really demotivates students because it's a pass or fail grade. Rather than you're doing great, you're doing the little stuff right, you're, you're learning, you're trying. Like that's the stuff that people need to, to, to think about. The self image, the self esteem, like how to have a conversation, like how to ask questions. Those are the things that we need to be learning in school. Because I don't care about Columbus Day and, and 3.14 equal pi, like none of that stuff applies to me. But when I go in this real world and I see a, a man, I got to shake his hand, I got to have a conversation, we got to work out a deal. That's what's important. But we don't learn that stuff. So it just goes on to life and it, it just, it's just a cycle. What you don't learn, you don't know. And what you don't know, you don't pass on. But me, I, like that's why I talk so much noise because I got to pass out the information because that's what life is about, mm -hmm. passing down information. That's why the Bible been around for so long. It's passed down. Like, it's, it's constant. That's any type of information. If it's, if it's true, it will be passed down. But a lot of people don't learn enough to pass stuff down. They're scared to learn. They're scared to try new things. They're scared to challenge themselves. But don't be the 85%. Be the 15%. Be the 1%. That's what I'm striving to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. I got a question. So you, you, you have your Wise Up shirt on. Would you kindly explain to, to the attendees here what is Wise Up? So, wise up, if you look in the dictionary, it's basically self-awareness. Mm -hmm. And with self-awareness, that's where the self-image, like everything with self, self-love, self-respect, self-accountability, self-esteem, like everything with self is wise up. It's not to the point where I'm raising myself up. Of course, my last name is wise, but if you go look in the dictionary, it's an actual word. And with that being said, like I'm living up to my word. It's like, what am I, what, what is my weakness, Josh? My attitude, my emotions, they conquer me. So I told myself, I'm gonna put this crown on here so I can control, conquer my emotions, my, my triggers. My, Cause again, I still have an attitude. I still get lit sometimes, but I've got to the point to where I just turn that into passion. Like I might be mad, but I'm trying to get the best out of somebody. Or if somebody, y'all see them next, on episode five or six, y'all see me lash out at somebody like I, <laughs> I ain't gonna give y'all too much. Yeah. I'm gonna have to watch. 
<laughs> but now, like, I just have to conquer myself because I am my worst enemy. And so it's like, am I going to be the fool or am I going to be the king of myself? And that's why I came up with the wise up. You know, and it's that the fit to me is just a constant reminder that I'm built for anything that comes my way. Like, no, there's nothing too big for me I can't conquer. Like, I might lose a battle, but I won't lose the war. The war is life. It's continuous. It's everlasting. All I want is peace, comfort, and abundance. And that's the king's life. I want all everything that, that the world has to offer, but I have to fight for it. I have to control. I have to conquer. I got to stay committed. I also got to make sure my foundation is stable. I got to build my castle. Like, everything that you see a king in the royal days, that's by blood. The kings of now is by what you know. Anybody who's reigning like an Elon Musk or, or Jeff Bezos, they know something. They have control over information. But what makes you think you can't do that? Mm -hmm. So that's the wise up. Absolutely. I want to transition. We have about it's the late 8-11. We uh, terminate around 8-30. Um, I want to transition into kind of an, another piece all under that self-image uh, umbrella you mentioned a little bit is uh, nutrition. Mm -hmm. Nutrition, 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 and I tell you, it's a uh, pivotal uh, key factor in everybody's life, male, female, wherever you, whatever, whatever, whoever you are, wherever you are, where you're from. And you know, what what piece of advice would you give to somebody uh, who's starting out to eat right, eat healthier portions? Like, I know that's pretty broad, but no, 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 no. I deal with okay. this every day. Okay. A lot of people ask me, like, what do I have to eat to to lose my gut? Yeah. Or what I have to do, what supplement I got to take. First thing first, again, it starts with the mental. Don't try to change the outside if you're not willing to change the inside. So there's three things you got to do. You got to be ready. You got to be willing. You got to be able. If you're not ready, you're not going to do it. If you're not willing to sacrifice, you're not going to do it. If you're not able, you're not going to do it. So if those three questions, if you're not ready, willing, and able, don't even ask me about it because you're not going to do it because you're, you're looking for a shortcut. But if you're ready for a lifestyle change, again, lifestyle. You literally have to give up who you are to who you want to be. So mm -hmm. I tell my clients the first seven days, send me a picture of everything that you eat. No, judge, no judgment zone. What that does subconsciously is like, well, I don't want to disappoint and make them seem I'm a fat ass. I'm not going to show them the pickles. I mean, the nachos and Doritos and stuff. So you just start thinking about what is healthy. You just start picking different alternatives. Oh, that's good. Got to get up, give up. What'd she say? Hold on. I'm sorry. That's good. Got to give up who you are. To what, yep. But yes. It's, it's who do I want to become. For me, I'm a bodybuilder, so when I get on stage, I don't care about that piece right now because when I get on them stage lights, they're going to see that piece on stage, and I'm going to get points because I'm going to be eight plate, ten plates because I ate a piece. But now for average Joe, just do more good than bad. Four meals out of five meals are great. They already planned. You know exactly what you're eating. You cooked it. Well, if you got to go to Chipotle or something like that, easy on the sour, like the sour, the dairy. The cheese, the, the avocados, the sour cream, like that stuff is flavorful, but it's not fulfilling. Like Absolutely. you can't get enough of it. And that's why you see a lot of people gain that freshman 15 because they got their buffet. <laughs> yeah. They're guilty. They got their buffet. So they just yes, indeed. They eat or they start stressing to eat it. But you literally got to reprogram your mind to like, who do I want to look like? What do I want to look like? What is that person, what is that person doing to look like that? So you gotta literally go out and try and ask yourself those questions and, and research. Because I can give you a diet right now. But again, you got to be ready, willing, and able. And with that being said, the most basic of the basics, a palm, your palm fish, a palm is your protein source. Like that with your thumb is like a fat source. That is like a veggie source. Like if you, if you just keep those in principles of mind, so a handful is like, like a meat. Let's say I got cod in the refrigerator right now. That's my cod. That's a little bit of olive oil. That's a little bit. Of, I'm going to grab a handful of veggies and put it on the bowl. Like, that's for you. Everybody's different because everybody's size is different. But now if you want to get specific, I'll say protein source in every meal, two or three carbs sources in every meal, two or three fat servings in every meal out of five. You got to write that down. Women should eat like five times a day. Men should eat like six times a day just because our muscle matters. But women, you cannot be scared to eat. It, it's not working. Like, people starve themselves to death and they still fat. Like, don't do that because what happens is you starve yourself for the week, but then on the weekend you eat like a king. <laughs> so you feast yeah. it. Absolutely. And it's constant. It's, it's, it's a cycle. And it's like you just, just damaging your metabolism. Because I have so many female clients that got thyroid issues because they 
doing themselves like that, not because of genetics or, 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 or DNA, it's your habits that makes your genetics. It's just passed down information. So remember, you can't beat genes. You can't delay genes, but you have to prevent it. You have to be proactive. You have to basically make better decisions every single day. Everything that you put in your mouth, ask yourself, why am I eating it? Right. If it's not to benefit you, is it to make you feel better? Like, you got to ask yourself those questions. You got to just be honest with yourself. Who do you want to look like in the mirror? I told I had a, I had a little kid in my house with my son. I've been knowing him since he was six or seven. He's 12 now. And all he does is play the game. And so they played the Fortnite for like seven, eight hours. And my, I said, y'all got to go work out now. He got on the bike for 30 minutes with my son boxing. After that, I put them through a circuit. We start huffing and puffing and, and getting lazy and start acting if you're tired. And I told my told him, I'm like, bro, my son is 10 years old. You 12. You let him outwork you? I've been knowing you too long for you to be doing this. You worked out with me when you was his age. Hmm. What do you? I said, and my son went to go take a shower. And I said, are you proud of that that's in the mirror? He said, no. Lo and behold, after he left my house, two weeks later, he up there with his mom at 6, 7 o'clock in the morning working out. I'm like, that's what I'm talking about. I lost probably 10, 15 pounds over the last three months. And that's, that's the spark. People got to keep that. Like, you got to literally, like, if, if a 12-year-old can think about that and, and change like that, why can't you? Mm. But it just, it just, it's, just start little by little, like, one thing at a time, like, one meal at a time, one day at a time. Don't try to lose 50 pounds in a week. Don't be so intense to where you can't be consistent with it. Mm -hmm. If you can't do it forever, don't do it. Mm -hmm. So that simple, that simple recipe applies to all demographics. And yep. like with you, you're, you're busy, very busy. And, and attendees, he's not lying when I say when I ask him a question. He'd get back with me instantly, but it was short because he was handling his business, and I respect that. But throughout your schedule, throughout your week, um, of course, after practice, you know, what – what does your diet consist of and how are you able, like how are you able to manage like snacks in between workouts and on the phone with clients or emailing and stuff so so my honestly to, like let's just say for the day i'm so busy and so productive you kind of forget to eat absolutely and so i got up at 3 30 in the morning got on my bike at four did my cardio got to work at five i, I took a a, a a whole carton of egg whites it's probably 100 grams of protein in it mm. and i drunk that from 5 a.m. to 6, sipping on it. And I didn't eat again until I got home after I got some containers and cleaned out my garage. And that was like 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. So literally 100, like that's nothing. That's 400 calories for the whole six, out, seven, eight hours I was at work. Because I had to go to the doctor, get my blood work, blood work done, have to schedule an uh, MRI for my, uh, for my head. And I just lost track of time. And I was just, and I was like, wow, I need to eat. So as soon as I got home, I made two meals just to get, like, to get my missing meals in. And now after I work out, I got to get two more meals in because that'll be my fourth meal. Like, then I'll have six meals. But it's, it's just my days are just different because it's surrounded by clients. Some clients want to talk after the session. I can't go to the microwave and eat. So I'll miss a meal. I got to run to my car, drink a shake. It's just I just know what I got to do when I got to do it. It's, it's really there's no set time for me to eat. I just got to eat around my schedule. But again, a lot of people can eat three big meals and be fine. But like you can do it at eight o'clock, twelve, uh, eight o'clock, one o'clock, and five o'clock. Be good. Or you can do it every two hours, every three hours, every six hours. You can fast all day. I don't. Again, I'm different. I know the rules, so I can break the rules. But for somebody who's starting off, just be consistent in what you can do. Like if you know you can't eat as much as you can, have a good breakfast, have a shake for lunch, and then have a good dinner. But just make sure you're getting the adequate calories that you need throughout the day. If you don't have any adequate calories you need, joshwise.fit, and I'll give you a, a, a <laughs> point. But not right now, though. But not right now. I'm, playing, I'm focused on me right now. I got 28 days on my show. I'm not taking on new clients. I'm not doing online clients. I'm being selfish right now. I'm loving me first right now. And then when I get back from my show, I'll help anybody who needs to be helped. That's but it. I'm giving y'all free game right now. Yeah. Download my fitness pal. Walk everything that you eat. If you don't have a food scale, go get one. My fitness pal, that will be your, your pen pal. That'll be your buddy for the week. And then you will see how much protein you're eating, how many carbs you eat, how much sugar you eat, how much fiber you're getting. Because a lot of women don't even eat fiber. I don't, like, it's, just, it's crazy how, how I see women eat. Because either they eat a lot or they eat nothing. Or they feel bad, they ate bad, they don't eat nothing. They'll starve themselves to death. 
ladies, y'all got to stop that because it's only making you worse because your metabolism will slow down. You start getting the gut. You start getting depressed. Then you start looking at Miami doctors for, for a mommy makeover. Hmm. Save the money. Just do the little stuff right. Why don't you laugh at that, Jimmy? <laughs> yeah, that, 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 did you. it ring through? <laughs> yeah. We, we all love to eat, apparently. And oh, I, I love, love eating, Jimmy. Love, love it. And, you know, everybody attendees, this is really free game. A lot of fitness trainers don't do this. But Josh does this for the love he has for people. Uh, most importantly, himself, um, so that he can pour into the lives of people. So um, y'all can ask away. I, I do have one myth that I've heard along the way is that breakfast is not good for you. I heard this from a trainer years ago at any time. Everybody, everybody, everybody has their own reasoning. If you, if you, if you into Dr. CB, I can understand what he's saying. Like you want to be alkaline and all that stuff. I get that. But, <laughs> Everybody's not built like that. Dr. C B don't work it. out. Dr. C B don't run five, six miles a day or or do 45 minutes cardio or lift a thousand pounds a day. Dr. C B picking gardens and and, 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 and and preaching. Like that's what he does. Like it's not a manual, it's not a physical job. But for somebody who's physical like me, I have to put the fuel in my body to get what I want out of my body. It's like a car. Dr. C B is a is a V6 engine. I'm a V8 engine. That's a Corvette. And I'm a Corvette, he's a Honda. Like, it will last, like, it's a car. It just depends on what you fuel it with. I might eat 3,000 calories a day. He might eat 1,500 calories a day just drinking lemon water and, and, and apple cider vinegar. I don't know. But everybody has a reason again. But if you can't do it every day, don't do it. But for me, in my lifestyle, if I get up at five, four, 3 o'clock in the morning to do cardio at 4 for 45 minutes, I have to break the fast. That's from 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. till I wake up. I didn't eat, but my body's still burning calories while I sleep. Absolutely. So I have to preserve my muscle by breaking the fast. That's what breakfast means, break the fast. Because you literally didn't eat for six, seven, eight hours if you're getting eight hours of sleep to replenish what you lost as you were asleep. And if you don't eat, you don't repair your muscles. Mm -hmm. If you don't repair your muscles, you lose your muscles, you wither away. So again, he might not be a me. Again, I'm a bodybuilder slash athlete. I want to look good. I don't want to, I want to look good and feel good. I don't want to just, well, I'm healthy, I'm alkaline, I'm, I'm, my, my, my blood level is good. Like, I get all that. But again, everybody has their own priorities. Everybody's lifestyle not the same. Everybody has a, a view of who they are and what they want to be. And I respect all that. So if you're a vegan, be a vegan. But be a vegan 100%, but leave the cheese alone. If you, if, if, if you, are, uh, if you, are, uh, if you just like fish, eat the fish, but leave the cheese alone. Leave the wine alone. Like, just cut back on the stuff that you know is not good for you because what I learned was hmm. when a lot of people give up meat, they gain something else. So let's say somebody did away with, with pork and all that stuff, all meat, but then they're eating 10 pounds of cheese and, 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 and fruit, and they still weigh the same. So calories are calories at the end of the day, but me, I'm a body composition guy. I want to see my body fat drop. I want to keep the muscle, lose the fat. That's how I train my clients because everybody want to look like an athlete like on ESPN. And that's what the look that they want. They want to be thick. They want to have a small waist, nice legs. But eating fruit and veggies like that is not going to get you what they want, get, get you that body. So it just depends on that person. All depends on that person. Absolutely. Free game. There's a lot of comments here I'm reading. I thought breakfast was the most important meal of the day. Yeah. ACB and lemon water, that's what I'm on. What's he say? Uh, Candace said ACB, alkaline water. Yeah. Lime water and lemon water, that's what I'm on. Let me see, how do I find the comments? Hold on. My fitness pal, I love eating. I thought breakfast was the most important meal of the day. It, it, it could be, but some people like to uh, fast. Like, I know a chick that I used to date, she uh, didn't eat until after 12. From 12 oh. to 8, she, like, mm -hmm. she, she had a vitamin shake, did a cardio workout, and then Three hours later, she'll eat from 12 to 8 p.m. just to let her uh, digestive system, like, do its job. Because, again, I'm eating all day, so my digestive system never stops. But it's good to keep, keep it a break. So when I do go long periods of time, or if I do feel sluggish, I will trade the red meat for the, for the white fish just to give myself time to break down what I'm processing. What is ACV? Apple cider vinegar. Oh, yeah. But, again, it, it depends. It all depends on who you want to look like, what you want to look like. How do you want to feel? If you're going for the for the healthy, uh, I want to feel good. I want to feel lighter. Vegan might be your thing. Like white fish might be your thing. Like no red meat, that might be your thing. But if you want to 
gain muscle, be lean, be strong, you will have to add that protein in there. Like that, that natural creatine that red meat gives you is it, beneficial. But again, it's all based on how you feel when you eat it. Like there's not one diet that, that makes somebody that good. I give my clients options. You got red meat, you got white fish, you got white meat. You pick what you want. I'm not going to tell you what you want. You know how you feel when you eat it. And I don't want to have no any rebuttals. It was like, <laughs> you do what you do. I'm going to give you what you need to eat, but you can plug and pull. If you got six options of protein, you got six options of carbs, you got six options of fats and veggies, you plug and pull. But um, some people got this absolute truth thing going on, and there's nothing that's absolute truth. I don't believe in that. Like, if it works for you, keep doing it. If it doesn't, try something new. But give it time to basically to access if it's actually working or not. Because some people want to be keto this, and one day they protein that, then one day they carbless this, and I'm just like, why do y'all always jump on a train? Do what's working for you. Because every time you stop, you got to start over. But that's the life thing again. I have a question about water. I keep hearing people say, Azoka water is not good for you. Is that true? It's not alkaline. It's like under 7.0. Like I do essential water in uh, Fiji water. What about core? Basically, basically the most expensive waters out there. Or you can just get a uh, get the iodine drops to, to basically purify your water or get a filter. But smart water, like all the mass Coca-Cola products, those are those are like those are very acidic. Very acidic. But again, if you're eating your veggies to balance it out, your body will naturally find its equilibrium if you're putting the right thing in it. Now, if you're drinking Diet Coke, well not Diet Coke, but Coca-Cola, drinking wine and drinking uh, smart water and then not eating vegetables and not having healthy alternatives, you'll be a city. You'll feel like it's H-I-T. Eat, I have a saying, I'm sorry if, I'm, if this offends anybody. If you eat like shit, you feel like shit. Simple as that. And if you feel that and you know that, change. Don't just sit up under that. Because again, all it's doing is making you reach for the cookies even more. And every time you reach for a cookie, you just program yourself. It's a habit. Every time I feel defeated, I grab a cookie. You can't do that. Basically, if you grab a cookie, for every cookie somebody eat, you got to tell yourself, I got to do 25 minutes of cardio, because that's basically what you're doing. So for a six-pack cookie, that's a, a, a lot of cardio. <laughs> but you got to change the way you're thinking about it. Yeah, very good, very good. Um, we're going to go ahead and wrap up. Uh, Josh, lastly, can you tell the folks where they can contact you? Um, have I have questions. a website, joshwise.fit. Okay. And if you want to contact me through uh, Instagram, and that's what I'm on most of the time, underscore Josh Wise. My apparel is wiseup-apparel.com. Wise and once you go on my IG, you'll basically find all my information. Mm -hmm. But Facebook is a good contact, too. I look at all my messages, even the filter ones. I might not reply if it's crazy. But if you got solid questions, I'll reply. But it might be on my time and not yours, obviously. But I'm, I'm here for people, like, I, I'm, the more that you guys ask me, the more I got to go learn. And I told Thomas, I appreciate him for basically uh, putting me on the spot because now on Sunday, I was talking to my guy, I kind of preluded this in my last uh, episode that Sunday would be a topic about self-image. Like, I didn't want to spill all my beans today. Absolutely. I just want to basically be, like, interactive. But, but Sunday, it will be more bullet points, like, this is what you need to focus on. Because, again, I don't like serving cold food. I want to hear what people have to say, what they wanted for me to address the audience. But YouTube a little bit different. I address the audience in my way. But if you guys have more questions, DM me, email me. It doesn't matter. You're not bothering me unless it's after 8 p.m. And it's after 8 p.m. <laughs> All right. No, eight, no after 8 p.m. messages to Josh. Everybody. I hate those. <laughs> um, again, thank you so much, uh, Josh, for taking time out to pour into the lives of young adults on tonight. We, we certainly appreciate it. Uh, I personally appreciate it. So good to see you doing well, uh, as well as your family. Um, so I hope that uh, you continue to do what you're doing for the Dallas community uh, and pour into the lives of people, ultimately, because that's what we want to do. We want to continue to grow our community and provide real world education, um, because it all starts with us individually um, to pursue the goals that we have set for ourselves. And again, Open Mic Night is simply just that. It's an avenue of, of real world education. And so. Um, if you enjoyed Josh, please contact him. He can give you a 
bucket load of free information for the past um, hour. And so uh, we want to continue to support him uh, along his journey. And if, if you guys um, have any questions about tonight's audio, please contact me. Um, I'll be glad to um, share information with you. Uh, Josh, do you have any last lasting words of encouragement or advice to, to us? Um, I was about to say something. What was I about to say? Never mind. I have I have nothing, but I enjoyed every last. Uh, now, cause I about to, I was trying to I was trying to think about how I was gonna do a discount code for you guys. I gotta go back. I'm oh. I'm gonna send you the information. You can send it to the people who join. Absolutely. So what I'll do is um, everybody has an email address. I'm sure the Google form that you signed um, prior to the meeting will generate an email list for me. So I'll probably contact most of you that way. I know. Okay. Right here I'll, send, I'll send you guys like a thirty percent off for a discount code on apparel and has some tights and stuff like that. Awesome. Just because y'all joined in, tuned in. Absolutely. What a, what a great perk. So thank y'all for tuning in. <laughs> uh, you never know what you're going to get when you tune in. So we hope to see y'all uh, back. Thank you so much, Josh. Oh, Candace. My problem, Good seeing y'all. Absolutely, Josh. Take care of yourself and uh, continue to stay safe, man. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in tonight. We'll see y'all next week.